Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live here on Behance. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I'm very excited for today to uh, finally get uh, kicked into these new challenges for this new wave of DCCs. Uh, hello to everyone in chat. I see Cristiano, uh, Vesma, Jill, Dave, Eric. Hello, Sam, uh, Alexandra, Viola. It's good to see everyone. I hope that you all um, are going to be joining me for the challenge this morning. Uh, I hope you folks are excited about it. Uh, I wanna jump into kind of a brief description of what we are going to be doing today if uh, some of you folks in chat are new and maybe haven't heard of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge and don't know what's going on. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to point out that we actually do have more than just me on the stream today. Uh, I'm kicking off the day with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, um, but after this segment, I will be back with uh, Stephen Green. And we're gonna be doing some drawing and painting uh, for a couple of hours. Uh, and then we're going to have the o Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Julian Crespo, followed by Claire, uh, who's going to be doing some XD workflows and pro tips. So we've got a jam-packed day full of awesome design today, so definitely don't anywhere after this segment because there's a lot coming up afterwards. Um, best name ever, Voodoo Val. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I'm glad that you are into it. Um, I, I like to be uh, magical and spooky whenever I can. It's kind of my thing. Uh, hello, Richard. It's good to see you as well. Ralph, uh, Abraham, Arkham, Larry, Jacqueline, Louise. It's good to see everyone in chat. Um, so for those of you uh, who are new uh, or who maybe have heard of the Daily Creative Challenge but have never been able to kind of jump in and participate, uh, if you folks head over to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, uh, you will actually come to this landing page uh, that will have all of the information that you need to uh, get involved with the community, get involved uh, with these challenges and participate along with me. Uh, so basically, uh, you get this little one through four step of how does it work. Uh, so each day you receive a challenge. Down here you'll see that all of these are, are kind of locked here. This is where all of our challenges will go. Uh, but this morning at 8 a.m. they actually unlocked the very first challenge, um, which is layers and selections. Uh, so you get, for all these challenges, you get a little a uh, brief description of what that uh, challenge is going to be about. So here it says layers and selections, turn you, yourself or a friend into a space explorer by swapping backgrounds uh, and adding space themed objects. And then you also have a get started button where you can click in and uh, get any files that I have prepared for you ahead of time to download and participate with me. And then also if you return to this video late, maybe you are in the future and you're watching several weeks from now, um, or maybe you're in chat right now, but you know that you can't finish this project uh, right now because you have other obligations, uh, or perhaps uh, if you are participating with, along with me today, uh, but you know that you need to go back and maybe rewatch something that I've done in the video, you can always come back here and hit that watch video button and it will actually bring you to the either the live broadcast currently um, or if it's no longer live anymore, it'll bring you to the archived video so that you can um, rewatch which is very, very useful. Uh, so number two, it says join the community chat, stay informed to connect with others. Uh, we want you to join our Discord. We want you to join our Behance chat. So if you're over on YouTube right now and you are wondering why I'm calling out names that you don't see in the chat, it's because I'm actually reading the Behance chat. So if you come over uh, to behance.net slash live, you will be on the Adobe Live Behance chat and I can see you and I can say hello uh, and you can also uh, participate in this chat to win uh, maybe some awesome prizes later on. Uh, so you definitely want to be over here on Behance. Uh, number three, watch our daily live show, uh, which is this, uh, as you know. Uh, and then it says, finally, share your work to get feedback from mentors and other participants. So if you join our Discord, you can either hit community chat there, um, or if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can hit join us. It will actually bring you to our Discord, which looks like this. And you can come in and you can uh, click the current challenge tab there, and you can post your challenges for the, uh, the challenges that we do day by day. Um, if you're a little late turning challenges in, 
or maybe you're doing a previous challenge, you can always go into past challenges. Um, and then you can also, you know, come in and introduce yourself and so on and so forth. So we definitely want you to join um, and hang out in here, get some feedback on your work. And I will actually be showcasing some of the uh, uh, challenge entries that you folks post um, regularly each day. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty fun. It's a pretty cool time. So um, I'm going to dive into today's challenge. Um, let me pull up uh, the uh, landing page one more time because I'm gonna show you if you folks click on this get started button, um, it'll bring you to this Dropbox where there is a starter file number one. Um, and I have actually downloaded this already. You guys, you guys will notice that it actually has a a photo of me um, in here and some of you who have done my challenges previously will probably be wondering why I always include photos of myself um, in the starter files and that is because I, I cannot give to you um, stock photos and things that I've only licensed to myself for uh, these projects, uh, but I can give you a photo that I own so that you folks have a starting place um, to jump into what we're doing today. So uh, turn yourself or a friend into a space explorer by swapping backgrounds um, and adding space themed objects. So I'm gonna go over today a few different ways that you can select um, and replace a background. And then I'm going to throw some, uh, like a new background in there and throw some cool uh, items in there. And I'm also going to maybe do a little bit of repair um, on this uh, this image. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna select my layer that has my image. Um, I'm gonna make sure and hide that text and I'm actually going to say Command T to free transform this and I'm just going to make sure that this image takes up my whole canvas uh, because I don't want any um, extra space around the edges there. I just want the whole entire canvas to be this image. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over ways that you can select, as I mentioned. So um, if you come over here to your toolbar on the uh, left-hand side, you'll notice that you have like a, a lasso tool, a polygon uh, lasso tool. You have um, quick selection, magic wand tool. You also have like subject select and so on and so forth. And they're all really great ways that you can select. Um, quick selection, for example, um, you can kind of drag um, uh, your, uh, almost like a, like a selection brush around in to certain spaces and it will kind of auto select around the contours of the areas of your uh, image. You can also, um, I'm gonna make my brush size bigger with the uh, left and right brackets here. You can also make this uh, larger and it will make the selection tool um, more or less sensitive um, and so on, which is kind of an interesting way to select. So if I wanted to do it that way, that's what I would do. I would just kind of drag out in this um, empty space here um, to select my subject if I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna quickly say command D to deselect that. Um, uh, another way that you can do that um, is if we grab the magic wand tool, kind of similar, I can kind of click into spaces here. If I hold um, my shift key, I can start like adding to that selection. You can turn the tolerance up and down. Maybe we'll turn this to 50 here up at the top and you can start selecting larger portions. Um, now, it, depending on what photo you are using or what image you are using, uh, these two selection tools uh, may or may not be the best. Because as you can see here for this photo, I'm clicking into this area, but it's starting to add my ear and, and all this stuff in here. And I could come in and change the tolerance and mess with the settings um, of this to get it just right, or I could experiment with other selection tools. So let's get into some more. I'm gonna try and cover as many as I can so that you folks can choose what is right for you in your project. Uh, so I'm gonna say Command D to deselect. Uh, you can always come over here to the lasso tool. This is maybe for somebody who has a stylus or is really good with a trackpad or a mouse. Um, and you could uh, zoom in here, actually. I'm zooming in to my canvas with the hotkeys Command and plus or minus here. Um, and you could come around and select uh, through the edges here and, and get the whole selection of your, um, your uh, subject. Um, I, however, um, am in the studio this week and don't have my Cintiq, which I usually have uh, when I do the challenges, so I'm not going to use the lasso tool because I don't believe that it would be accurate, but if that's right for you, then you should check that one out. Uh, another one that you can do, let me say Command D, is the polygonal lasso tool. Um, and this one is like the lasso tool, except that you are basically uh, 
kind of clicking around the edges and it's it's just giving you straight lines that you are directing around the edges of whatever you would like to select. Uh, so this one can work if you have like a very uh, a high contrast uh, image maybe that has very clear lines. Um, that you want to uh, select around. Uh, perhaps you're not using a photo of a person, perhaps you're using a, a, a kind of an image of an illustration or something with uh, harder edges. It would be easier maybe for you to use the polygonal lasso tool. Um, if that's right for you, then go ahead and uh, check that out. Um, but I think that what I am going to do um, is I'm just gonna hit my select subject button um, and just let uh, the AI do it for me. Um, so this works pretty well for me. I'm gonna zoom out here. And as you can see, it kind of gives me a nice selection around the very edges uh, of my uh, face and head here. Uh, and one thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna zoom in actually with the polygonal lasso tool um, because you can combine these selection tools. I'm gonna hold, uh, let's see, I'm gonna hold control so that I'm subtracting from this uh, selection that I have. And I'm gonna come in, if it'll let me, let's see. I am used to being, uh, oh, I'm gonna hold Alt, actually. I'm used to being on a PC, so I'm using Mac today and I'm getting my uh, hotkeys a little confused. Um, so I'm gonna actually come in here and I'm gonna select around the area of my eyelashes because the image that I've got, it's kind of a regular selfie. Um, I chose not to do a super detailed, high quality image today because I know that a lot of people um, are probably gonna be using their own selfies or their own images that they took. Uh, for the challenge today and I wanted to show um, doing this challenge essentially with like kind of a, a regular photo that you folks may, may have available to you. So I'm actually going to um, remove the eyelashes there and then I am going to uh, add them back at, uh, later at the end. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say Control or Command J just so that I have only me. Uh, like that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide that image. I'm going to grab this layer that I just duplicated here. I'm gonna say Command T, and I'm actually going to rotate that like so, just like that. Now you could do a lot of things here. You could make this larger, you know, if yours is not um, centered uh, like mine is, and you could um, reorient it uh, so that the edges are not kind of peeking out, like you can see uh, right about, I believe right here, um, you can see there's a little bit of the white canvas peeking out. Um, or you could come through and you could use something like maybe a content aware fill or the patch tool. Um, the patch tool is actually one of my my favorite tools, maybe I can find it here. I think it's probably underneath something. Um, if I can snag it, give me one moment here. Find where it's at. Huh, one moment. Got kind of a different tool set up for myself uh, today. Hmm. You know, I might I might leave it. That was kind of like a little a little bonus, a little extra sort of thing that I um, wanted to do. Um, but it is not technically on our agenda today, so maybe I will leave it. Um, and I will actually just go Control or Command T, um, and I will enlarge this just to get the edges of our image like so. Um, and then I might even, uh, depending on how I actually want to touch this up, I might even come over, create a new um, layer uh, and paint underneath to kind of bring the edge of the head up there to make sure that it's fitting into the frame. Um, or what I could do is I could grab my uh, lasso tool and I could come in and grab a part of the hair um, and I could duplicate that uh, with Command J and drag that layer underneath uh, Command T um, and kind of transform that just to add another piece of the hair right back in there. It's kind of up to you how you want to edit this. Um, so now I have um, my subject uh, pretty much selected from my background and I can start adding a brand new background. Um, now the way I'm going to do that actually is I've got some images um, on my desktop that I am going to open right quick. If I can navigate to desktop, yes, I've got three images here and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna open all of these images. If it will allow, there we go. Um, so I've got 
uh, let's see, let's use this one here. I've got this cool purple background and I can come in um, and I can say, you can either grab a layer um, from this existing uh, file and you can drag it over and hover over your current uh, file and then you can drop that in there like so. Um, or what you could do is you could uh, come over to your a file here and you could say uh, control or command A to select the entire canvas and then you could say control or command uh, C or control or command X for copy or cut. Um, and then you could come over and paste it. So it's really, it's really up to you what you wanna do. This is kind of just an experiment of changing backgrounds but showing you as many methods as I can in a short time as possible for how to do so. Um, so now I'm going to say command T to transform and I'm gonna drag this out out like so and just kind of put some space uh, behind me which looks pretty cool I don't know if anybody noticed but I am wearing a Star Wars rank badge in this image uh, to keep with our uh, science fiction adventure kind of theme for all of these challenges you guys will see a an Easter egg hidden from either Star Wars Star Trek Starship Troopers or Battlestar Galactica in, in all of the challenges. So if you guys can point it out, you get extra points. I can't actually award you a prize for guessing it, but you get, you get kudos from me is what you get if you find them. <laughs> Um, so now that I've got my space background in there, I'm actually going to come in with some planets as well because it would not be a complete space image if we didn't have planets. So I'm gonna unlock this and I'm gonna drag this over here hover over my starter file and throw all of these planets in. Now, normally uh, you could use the selection tools like we just did to maybe cut these planets out um, and choose which one you want and, and just put the planets in there. But another way that you can do this um, if you don't want to actually select and remove something but you still want to edit the background is I'm gonna do Command T to transform and I'm just gonna make this a little smaller so I can see a large, larger selection of these planets. Um, and I'm actually going to use a blending mode, uh, to be honest, because my entire background for this is white, which means that I, uh, uh, some of the blending modes here will actually allow me to kind of show the image without um, removing the background, I believe. Um, let's see if we, you can, you can actually come over and preview all of these. Um, you know, it, it depends, like some of these will take the background out, but you can still kind of see um, the, the, the background image through it. It's really up to you what you're choosing. I actually don't think any of these are really good enough to uh, really do what I wanted there. So I may actually end up selecting, uh, but it kind of depends on what uh, sort of image you are trying to achieve. If you don't mind that some of the uh, space texture in the back maybe shows through any other objects that you're putting onto your canvas, then that's fine. Um, but I think that I do. Uh, and when you're going through your blend modes, you can actually come over um, and just hover and you know drag your cursor down the line of blending modes that you're using um, to kind of preview them and see uh, which one you want to use. Uh, if you were on a PC, you can actually click uh, the blending modes uh, uh, panel there and select one of the blending modes and it will actually keep that blending mode panel highlighted a uh, light blue and on PC you can actually click through with your um, up and down arrows and cycle through all of your um, blending modes that way as well. So those are two different ways that you can do that. Um, but like I said, I, I don't actually think I'm gonna get lucky and, and get to uh, just remove that white background without removing it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my quick selection tool um, and I'm going to just click right in there on that uh, planet and I am gonna say Command J and I'm just gonna duplicate that right out. I'm gonna hide this, I'm gonna uh, right click this um, and I'm gonna convert it to smart object because I'm gonna be resizing it. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, Command T and I'm going to enlarge that just so I have like a kind of a cool planet in the background. Um, now you'll notice I do actually have like kind of a circular selection around this, which is not really that great. Um, if you wanna get rid of that, a way that you can do that is uh, maybe we'll, I'm gonna subtract from this. So maybe I will duplicate this layer um, and then I'll rasterize this. 
Uh, another thing that you can do is if I hold command and click that layer there, um, it will actually do a selection of everything that's in the layer. Um, and I can come up here to select, modify, and expand or contract. I'm gonna contract that uh, selection maybe by three pixels, that might do it, maybe a little bit more. Uh, go back to select, modify, uh, contract. Maybe we'll do it by six pixels. Um, that might work. Uh, and then I'm going to right click and say select inverse. And then I'm gonna say command X. And it kind of cuts that area away. You can also add a feather to that uh, if you want to make that a little smoother. But basically I like to expand or contract um, to this uh, the opposite side of like that edge where I know that I want to remove and then I just cut it right out. Um, other people might use a mask to do this, um, but this is just kind of a quick way to do it with selections. Um, uh, and I might I might have spent a little more time on it to make it a little bit cleaner um, if I had the time, but I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now and let you folks experiment with how you want to do it. And then I'm gonna turn my uh, image back on. Uh, now to clean up this image, um, if it were me, um, I might do what I just did with the planet maybe and select my um, image here uh, like so, maybe command um, and click uh, on the layer so it selects everything there. And then I could go, maybe we can do um, a little bit of a, let's see, modify um, and we'll feather that a little bit. Let's feather it by about three. I don't want to do anything too crazy. Um, and then we'll uh, expand it a little bit or, or contract it, maybe like so, okay. And then I'll select inverse on that again and I will command X just to kind of clean up the edges. Um, and then maybe I could take a soft round brush um, uh, and actually go around the very edges of this and kind of, kind of clean it up. Um, you could do that. Uh, uh, or you could use a mask because you, you probably would be better off using a mask because you're doing it non-destructively, but there's so many ways to do things in Photoshop. But this is how um, I would very quickly with a, a plethora of selection tools kind of come in um, and replace a background and add some cool spacey elements and things uh, to make myself look like a space explorer. Um, I can't wait to see what you folks do. Um, I hope that you will um, participate along with me uh, and uh, maybe save your work and put it into the Discord. I'm gonna pull that up real quick just to show that off. Um, if you folks come over to um, the the Discord at uh, bit.ly slash PS Discord. Um, and the P and the S must be capitalized, so make sure you do that. Um, or you go and click the Join Us button on the uh, Challenge tab um, or the, the Challenge landing page. Um, you will be able to come into our Discord and you can come into the current challenge uh, tab here and you can start posting your portraits of you um, or your friends or maybe some other celebrities or who, whichever image you have found to turn into kind of a space explorer image. Um, very excited, uh, like I said, to see what you guys come up with. Um, and I am out of time for the day, but it was a blast getting to come in and experiment with you. Uh, and I hope you folks will stay tuned because I'm gonna be back uh, in just a few minutes with Stephen Gray and we're gonna be here doing some digital painting um, and illustration. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. I will see you folks soon.